Hello everyone, this is Defense Politics Asia and basically the place that draws the best arrow. And this is time you have to press the like button and uh, send some humanitarian aid to the like button because that joke was cringe. And of course, no, do subscribe if you are new to this channel and we're going to start off with the Frontline Changes Report. And for those that uh, have no idea what the hell is this video about uh, this uh, Ukraine situation report. Uh, in case you just click this by accident. Anyway, uh, or you have already forgotten after you click in and it was like, uh, what, is, what, what the hell? what they click on and uh, over at the Cerebrasgay forest tree in the Kremina front this Kremina city in the uh this is Cerebrasgay forest tree basically this is actually a forest uh that is meant to be uh lumbered um uh, so and uh, basically there is a joe location of ukrainian forces uh, raising some flag in the middle of the forest uh showing that they are there or rather the russians are not there so the ukrainians have captured this part of the forest so uh so this is uh, a news after there is actually no news in the, within this forest region for a very long time. The last report was in, yeah, in February, uh, more than uh, like more than a month ago. And also, there is no no actions around here, and suddenly the Ukrainian forces uh, find it uh, pretty safe to raise some flag. You no, know? and uh, so the other front line change uh, is over at Tonenke, over at the Adyevka front. So this Adyevka city and uh, the Adyevka front, the Russian forces, uh, the Russian Defense Ministry has announced that they have captured Tonenke. I have not have any uh, corroboration about this from any other sources, but it seems like the Russian uh, Russian Defense Ministry have said that they have conquered uh, Tonenke entirely, and uh, this is actually very believable because the Ukrainian forces have been uh, stuck in this salient. Uh, this is a dog bone, and uh, so so yeah, the the they have been in the very difficult spot. So uh, the Russian forces taking the rest of Tonenke. Uh, it's basically a matter of time and uh, it seems like the Russian Defense Ministry basically have uh, uh, declared it. Of course, we will still look for corroboration, which is why uh, this is not a flag. Uh, this is actually just a loud hailer uh, icon because uh, we can't tell. Uh, basically, we can't tell uh, that at this moment. But of course, I can put it as a flag, but you know, some of you guys will be complaining. You know, so that's that's what it is. And uh, over in the Donetsk front in Kyogivka or Kyogivka, uh because uh, this it's actually Georgievka. Even the Ukrainians pronounce it like Georgievka. But you know, it's a Ukrainian uh, weird thing that they write, they write to change all the G to H for no apparent reason because they don't even pronounce it in that way. Anyway, uh, geolocation of U Russian forces at this very position uh, getting uh, striked. Uh, by FPV drone on the Ukrainian side, basically confirming confirming Russian presence around here. And in fact, actually, I should have drawn another box, basically uh, in this way, uh, to show that the Ukrainian claim has been invalidated. So let's do this. So, okay, maybe a bit lesser. Uh, okay, never mind. It's okay. So, here, 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 Ukraine claim uh, invalidated. So, oops, wrong. Uh, yeah, so let me copy this so so you guys can see actually you know what how how this this done whoops and I've changed the color to red so yeah so basically this is a Russian capture uh, to this area here and uh, this in this area uh, is actually uh, invalidation of Ukrainian claims so uh, previously the Russian uh, front line is actually here so the, basically this is actually the the, the change the, the front line change just a little bit just a little bit so um that's all for the frontline changes report and i'm going to refresh the page so um yeah just in case because we just made some, some change ah uh, hope that your eyes is okay uh, because i just flashed you and you have absolutely forgotten everything you know because it's like no man in black you have uh, forgotten everything they have just said you don't even know your name and uh, your name is dude uh so anyway uh over in the Kherson front at the Kherson front there is still reports of fighting in the southern bank of the Dnieper river according to the ukrainian defense ministry and um yeah so we do not know where the fighting is so we're gonna you know as just assume that it's gonna be a crinky and uh, there is a number of drone strikes which is very uh, significant uh one of them is the 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 russians launched lancet drone strike on the air base near mikolaev at the Kubalkino 
Airways. So there's an L-39 aircraft allegedly getting destroyed. The, this aircraft look a lot like a Sukhoi 25, or at least based on the footage, which I'm lazy to show you the footage. So, you know, uh, make do. And uh, and there's also two more drone strikes. Uh, one, uh, this Lancer actually hit a radar station uh, over at this location, Kopleve. Leve, mm, nice name. And uh, there's an old, another one, another Lancer drone strike hitting a petrol ship at the at this uh, port at Huayhorivka. So this area here. So the these are all Lancer drone strikes, and you can see that the the Russian drones are actually flying further and further away to look for targets. And uh, clearly the drones do not operate uh, just no because the Lancer drone is a suicide drone, so they are not just using the Lancer drones as just surveillance. Uh, they definitely have some surveillance drone that is already loitering around uh, in this area here looking for targets and then once they found something they will actually you know, call in the Lancet and I, I believe this is how they operate because usually all this Lancet strike we, we, they do have a second drone that is actually monitoring and surveilling and taking the video footage to be posted uh, on social media so uh, as usual I always assume that there will be more actions than just the footages released uh, online so this is definitely a uh, a seeming change in terms of the situation at the Kherson front where the is no longer such a target rich uh, environment and the Russians are actually going further and further away to hit other targets and the fact that they are hitting the, sh the boats as I mentioned uh, in, as I re reported over the past few days uh, there is already two vessels getting hit so this is the another vessel that's got gotten hit which means that the Russians are running off targets because these kind of petrol ships are actually very low priority they are very useless um, in terms of the strategic situation the tactical situation they are not very useful the Russian Ukrainians can't really use can't, can't really do much with them the fact that they are getting hit means that you know the Russians are running out of target around this area here and uh, over in the Zaporizhia front uh, at the Zaporizhia front this is the Zaporizhia front uh, Kalemsky sector Orekhiv sector and the Huya police sector uh, someone told me in the comments Hul or Hui Hui uh, Hui is actually some some cursed language in Russian or something like that so and anyway, uh, the Russian forces are conducting an offensive action mainly in this um, in this two third, uh, the western two third uh, that's fighting reported. Not really, actually not really fighting, but it's more like a fire mission on Stepove. And there is also Russian forces attacking in the area of Kopani, uh, over in the western part of Robotine at Robotine itself, as well as at Mernay. So uh, Mernay is the interesting one uh, because there was a de declaration of the capture of Mernay recently. Uh, so there is, this is reported by the Russian Defense Ministry. The capture was reported on the 17th of March. Uh, and then, yeah, so this is the situation over the Zaporizhia front. We move on away from the Zaporizhia front into the Donetsk front. So this is the Donetsk front. Uh, this the and a uh, Veliko Novosilka sector, Volida sector, and Marinka sector, and um. Fighting is being reported at Staro Mayoske, Uruzaini, at Pavlivka, towards Vodian. The Ukrainian forces uh, clash uh, as they are also being reported to be attacking at Vodian. The Russians are attacking at Novo Mihailivka, at Georgivka, as well as Krasnohorivka. So, this is the strategic situation over in the Donetsk front. Um, Pavlivka is interesting, uh, I would say, because fighting at Pavlivka always seems to be a precursor to a possible attack into Voleda but no may or may not happen uh, and of course there is this uh, constant op uh, operation happening over at uh, the Uruzaini and Staro Mayoske region uh, which is definitely something that I, I will always watch uh, over at the Marinka sector as we go a bit deeper here there is a uh, location of the front line with the Russian forces attacking over in the northern part of Novo Mihailivka and of course the 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 front line change uh, at Georgievka shown by the FPV drone strike. The Ukrainian forces are also getting airstrike uh, in the western part of Georgievka. So the Russian forces have uh, geolocated over here. The, U the Russians then actually do an airstrike uh, with uh, the fat bomb. So so this is uh, a continuation. Uh, Georgievka has been a subject of a lot of airstrikes. And uh, there is also some reports about fighting in the southern part of Krasnohorivka. Uh, according to Raiba as well as the Ukrainian Defense Ministry. So the Russians are st still attacking in this area here. We don't have a lot uh, to talk about in terms of Krasnohorivka because there's so little information coming out from this area here. 
uh, the 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 commander in this area has made uh, has very good the uh, operational discipline with his troops. So uh, very impressive. Uh, over in the Adyevka region, the Russian forces are continuing to press on their advantage with fighting reported at Semenevka, Badaichi, and uh, Povomaisky and towards Netolove. There's a uh, there's also no claims about fighting towards Umansky as well as Nevelsky. So the one at Umansky was reported by the uh, by Raiba, the pro-Russian source. And also the Russian forces have been uh, have declared that they have captured Toninke. Uh, this is coming from the Russian Defense Ministry, as I mentioned in the Frontline Changes report. Ukrainian forces are counter-attacking over at Povomaisky, at Vodian, over at uh, Toninke, as well as Bedaichi. So this is the strategic situation uh, in this uh, at the FK front. And um, the, the claim about fighting towards Umansky would suggest that uh, Tonenke has been captured. Uh, so if not, then you can't really you know, go around because uh, if you because Umansky is over here, to attack here, you have to capture Tonenke first. So uh, the fact that they are reporting uh, fighting towards to uh, Umansky, according to Raiba, so there's a possibility of an offensive in the direction of Semenevka and Umansky, so, uh, which means that uh, they are possibly you know, have already taken Natonenke uh, for good. Uh, so some semi-corroboration of the Russian claims. And uh, over in the Badaichi region, uh, there is U Russian forces you know, checking out the Abram tank at Badaichi. The fact that they can uh, look at the tank uh, more closely shows that uh, they have pretty decent control of this region here around Badaichi, uh, which means that the front line may have already moved or the Ukraine forces are pretty far away uh, that the Russian forces do not feel the danger. Uh, and some rumors say that the, the Abrams tanks is actually not very damaged. The internal parts may actually be still intact. And uh, if that's the case, then uh, it may reveal some operational secret uh, to the Russian side. But of course, these Abram tanks are not the state of the art ones. These are the old ones. So I don't think the Russian defense ministry is going to earn. Uh, the Russian military is not is not going to uh, uh, learn much about it. Over in New York, uh, there is fighting reported in the region of New York, according to the Russian defense ministry. Uh, from in yesterday's and today's report, the Russian forces uh, have been defending against uh this Russian uh, Ukrainian attack. Not much. Uh, was said about this area here. So we will continue to wait for more information. Over at the southern part of the Bakhmut front, fighting is being reported uh, over at Klishievka as well as Andreevka as usual. And there's also fighting reported at Ivanivsky. And uh, that's about it over in the Bakhmut front. I don't... Oh, there's also fighting reported at Bodenivka. So not much. Uh, I don't, don't expect too much from this front line anymore because uh, there is... A lot of reports of attack but no almost no frontline changes i think this is just a trap for now uh, from the, my view i think that this is just a place where they are just attracting ukrainian forces to come to this area here so to reinforce and hold the line and uh this will be a place where the ukrainians will be very confident uh, because the defense line here is actually you know pretty decent i think it's pretty defendable for the ukrainians so but then Holding a line means you need cannon folders, you need uh, troops, you no know, equip equipments to be holding position, and this would actually open them open them up to lancet strike, drone strikes, missile strike, artillery strikes, and air strikes. And if we believe that the Russians are into de demilitarization, then uh, the pressure that the Russians is pushing uh, on the Bakhmut front may be deliberate uh, to attract more Ukrainian forces to into the front line over here so that they can be destroyed on site, which is why probably the front line do not change. So uh, over at the Sivas front, uh, there is some uh, expanded action. Fighting is reported at Versailles, at Rosdalivka, at, at Zolotar, Zolotarivka, as well as Bilohorivka. Ukrainian forces are counter-attacking at Bilohorivka. And uh, this reports about fighting at Versailles and Rosdalivka is reported by the Ukrainian Defense Ministry, which actually somewhat corroborates the reports from uh, yesterday uh, about the possible of, of Ukrainians attacking around in this area here. But anyway, the Russians are pushing. I uh, Tentatively, we will continue to monitor. I think the, the push from the south is always more threatening than the one over in the northern part. But we shall wait and see how this goes. And uh, moving into the criminal front, at the criminal front, uh, there is fighting reported at Terni, 
as well as Yampo Levka, Ukrainian forces counter-attacking and Terni. And in a more breaking, uh, more mind-blowing, no, wrong, too, too, too much. Um, in a more significant news, there is fighting reported at Dibrova. So the for the last time we have reports of fighting at Dibrova is exactly one month ago. So Russian forces are pushing at Dibrova. This is the first fighting at uh, Serbransky Forestry region uh, in a month. So I'm not sure if this will start to escalate more and more, especially, you know, it coincides with the, the Ukrainian forces raising a flag within the forest itself. So very interesting. We will continue to monitor and uh, see whether Kremina will start to blow up again into a meaningless fight uh, because uh, <laughs> the front line don't really change much in the Serebransky forestry. And uh, we move on further up north. There's nothing at the at the Svetovay front, we move into the Kupians front. So at the Kupians front, very interesting, Russian forces are attacking at Sinkivka. This is normal. But we have fighting being reported at Tinkovka, Yakitne, as well as Kaislivka. I'm not sure if this will be a start of a new offensive operation with the Russian forces heading towards uh, Stepova, Novoselivka, and cutting the highway near Pischane. Not sure. Um, because every time I thought that this is going to happen, the Russians stop pushing. So and the Ukrainian lines uh, around here is extremely strong. Uh, this this is a very, very uh, heavily defended line because of the how vital it is for the Ukrainians. Uh, you, they cannot allow the Russians to appear uh, in this area here. They will not be able to defend it. Uh, so I think we will continue to monitor and I'll see how this progress. Anyway, don't expect too much because the Russians are very slow. Very, very slow. Uh, yeah. They, they almost don't like to attack, almost. And uh, over in the Belgorod front, uh, at the Belgorod front, there is still some sort of fighting, some sort of fighting being reported, but it's not exactly it. The Russian Defense Ministry corroborates uh, the Ryber's report saying that the Russian forces have fully mopped up uh, Kozinka. So no, now it's super clean. Uh, that uh, There is like no... No, I just I'm just joking. Uh, the the joke didn't work out. No, I, I I lost the momentum. Anyway, the the Ukrainian forces have been to totally pushed out of Kozinka. This is exactly what that is supposed to mean. So, however, uh, still footages are still coming out. Uh, from the battles that was happening. Uh, while the Ukrainians are still there, Joe location of a Russian attacking the Ukrainian forces, which the Ukrainian forces don't really have a tank in this area here. So it is kind of an outclassed uh, operation with the Russian forces uh, sending a tank against our uh, infantry. And then there is also a Russian airstrike uh, within Kozinka against the Ukrainian forces. And there is geolocation of Ukrainian forces uh, retreating quickly with a vehicle coming, coming over here to uh, pick them up and evacuate away from the front line. So this footage of the, the retreat may actually corroborate the fact that the Ukrainian forces have given up Kozinka and actually pushed out. And uh, the fact that there is a Russian tank involved, the airstrike and then the evacuation, this might actually be the story of how the Ukrainian forces basically uh, decided to bounce. And uh, the Russian Defense Ministry also reported uh, uh, that they have bombarded multiple locations in this particular front line with bombings, uh, with uh, Russian bombing and a strike and uh, artillery strike, I think it's uh, which one? Fire damage, they call it fire damage. Basically, it could be airstrike, artillery strike, and, and drone strikes at uh, Kulokashivka, Olesendrivka, at uh, Velika, Pasarivka, as well as Yamne. So basically, it could be a case where the vehicle is trying to leave and they're getting bumped all the way out. That could be a possibility. <laughs> I'm not sure. And I'm not sure if there is, or, th or maybe there is actually Ukrainian forces uh, still gathering within these areas here deciding what to do next and then the russians are try trying to you know wear them down there's also a possibility we do not know what is the exact situation and there is also fpv drone strike hitting a radar uh that is used for counter battery actions uh near Oleksandrivka. so you no know, um the ukrainians are now on the back foot the belgorod offensive is entirely over right now and uh it's back to the drawing board uh if the russian claims are true we are talking about 3,500 losses uh, on the Ukrainian side with uh, almost 100 vehicles. Sounds a lot for just a week plus of fighting. So we will continue to monitor and uh, we see how this progress, uh, whether the Ukrainians will have a better idea. Sorry, Russians, you know, the freedom Russians, free Russians, 
whatever no and uh there's nothing over the sumi region and that's it this is the summary for the day of 756 for the 20th of march do press the like button subscribe subscribe yeah and uh just to note uh again uh as usual uh youtube is not really pushing dpa's video so if you can share the dpa's video to help help dpa to push and reach more people do share it uh especially people who you also know that are, are you no know, followers of dpa because uh, youtube is not really not pushing you no know? if people don't see the video they wouldn't know that there's a video exists they will not think about it so you know do share 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 helps and uh yeah so thank you for watching i'll see you guys in the next update stop are you crying eh?